Well, you see, Miss Atterbury, when Mrs. Davis told me how disappointed you were in Sherry's this morning, I thought I'd give you a crack in this dress. But why don't you want to keep it, Miss Brooks? Well, let's just say it's not my type. So you're welcome to it for $25. Only $25? Miss Brooks, that's a steal. Let's use another word, shall we? <laughs> but it's so charming. How can you part with it? Oh, that's easy. Frankly, it doesn't fit me very well. And even if it did need a few alterations for you, why, you're a needle and thread expert, aren't you? No, I'm more the bucket and mop type. <laughs> In fact, I couldn't even fix this thread from my hem this morning. Maybe if I held the hem and pulled real hard... I wouldn't do that. <laughs> why not? <laughs> oh, dear, now that's a nasty rip, but I'll do my very best to mend that, Miss Brooks. You just take that off. Oh, thank you, Miss Atterbury. But I really can't wait around for repairs. I'm due at the principal's office right now for an important meeting. Would you mind if I wore this dress just till I finish my business with Mr. Conklin? Oh, I suppose not. And then when you get back, I'll try it on. Oh, I do hope I can get into it. Just have the money ready. You'll get into it. <laughs> If I'm asking for the moon, Daddy, I just want permission to withdraw three dollars from my school savings account. To squander on ridiculous costume jewelry? Permission denied. You spend entirely too much money on juvenile paraphernalia. What about you, Daddy? Mr. Boynton told me what he's selling you for the masquerade ball at the Elks Club tonight. Of all things, a raccoon coat. I am going as a college boy. Moreover, the coat is serviceable for subsequent use. I don't go around spending my money on mere trinkets. Then why is it that only last week you spent $10 for an Elks too? Because I thought it would be cheaper than pulling one of my own. <laughs> oh, please, Daddy. You're always claiming I'm extravagant, and yet you never let me buy anything. Why didn't you let me buy the formal I wanted for the prom? Oh, it distresses me to hear you talk this way, girl. <laughs> Why, do you... Do you realize it's invariably a craving for unnecessary finery that is the basis for most of the crimes committed by women? Crimes? Just today, there was a story in the paper about a female embezzler. Do you know what her alibi was? That she had to have enough money to dress as fashionably as the other girls. That's what caused her to filch $25 at a clip. You show me a fancy-dressed girl with a moderate income, and I'll show you an embezzler. Good morning, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Brooks. We have on a new dress, I see. Oh, is yours new, too? Oh. Yes, sir. Hello, Harriet. I was just leaving, Miss Brooks. It's only three dollars, Daddy, if you change your mind later on. Go, girl. <laughs> yes, sir. Now then, Miss Brooks, have you brought all the student banking records with you? Well, not exactly all of them, Mr. Conklin. Uh, then how many? None of them. <laughs> you see, sir, when I accepted this extracurricular work, I expected to have more time to get things in order. Recording new accounts, compiling the figures... I will give you until lunch period, Miss Brooks. Lunch period? Exactly how much time do you expect? Well, that's up to the judge. Oh, uh, <laughs> lunch period, yes, sir. <laughs> Miss Atterbury, it looks as good as new. Are you ready to try your dress on now? Lucky for me, this is a free period, Miss Brooks. Otherwise, I'd have to go over to the girls' gym and change. Either that or you could go to the boys' gym and charge admission. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it snappy, Miss Atterbury. It's almost lunchtime, and I have to hurry over to the biology lab to meet Mr. Boynton. Oh, did Mr. Boynton invite you for lunch? That's why I've got to hurry. I want to invite him to ask me. <laughs> Five dollars, please. Oh, not till I'm certain it fits. I hope it does, Miss Brooks. Uh, do you think you can help me squeeze into this? Oh, sure. There's nothing to it. It's as simple as steering the Queen Elizabeth into the tunnel of love. <laughs> now, here we go. In you go. Over your little head. That's it. Now down over your little shoulders. <laughs> there we are. Fine, fine. <laughs> Now past your little waist. Now past your little... Oh, you'll never make it. Too hard. There we are. 
Why, it fits you like a glove. How do you feel? I feel like my whole body's in a tourniquet. <laughs> Why, you never had a better fitting dress in your whole life. It brings out your curves. Those that aren't out already will be out any minute now. Let me see if I can pull up the zipper. Uh-huh. Won't move. Oh, nonsense. Take a deep breath now, will you? <laughs> now hold it. When can I breathe out? <laughs> oh, don't be a child. You look lovely, Miss Atterbury. Thanks. I can't hold my breath any longer. Oh, oh. what happened? The zipper just returned to at ease. <laughs> It's no use, Miss Brooks. This will never do. I can't even breathe in it. I'm sorry. The deal is off. Oh, no, Miss Atterbury. You're passing up a great buy. After all, breathing isn't everything. <laughs> sorry, I'm going to get into my own dress. Yes, but you haven't given it a fair chance. Just give it one more, will you? Very well, Miss Brooks. One more breath. <laughs> the latest thing, plunging neckline. <laughs> You know, all the fashion experts agree that necklines are going farther south every year. They may be going south, Miss Brooks, but... I know. That one's on its way to Mexico City. 